Hello Vikings and welcome to the class of 2025 to Evergreen High School. I am so excited to be one of the very first to welcome you as Evergreen High School students. I am Jenny Conrad and I am the Communications Director for the District and I've also had 20 years experience working in the High School Guidance Office and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you aboard as high school students. Now, I'm sure some of you feel very comfortable and familiar with the high school. You've been to the cafeteria, you've been to the media center. And I'm sure many of you have had brothers and sisters also graduate from Evergreen High School. Even your parents may be alumni of Evergreen High School. And many of you have been to basketball games and football games, so you sort of know what's going on. But I'm here to tell you that your experience is unique. This isn't your brothers and sisters school. This isn't your mom and dad's school where they went anymore. This is your time to enjoy, to get involved, and to be a high school student. This presentation is used to get you started, to talk about your high school schedule, our traditional new schedule, get your course requests nailed down, Talk about graduation requirements and what it takes to get you from an almost high school student as a freshman to that graduation stage in May of 2025. Now don't worry, there's plenty of people here to support you. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to help you out. Let's get started. This is your first step in your high school journey. One thing is for sure, you're not in middle school anymore. In high school, you get to start your high school career with a clean slate. There's no bad grades. There's no disciplinary reports. It is completely clear and you get to start over. It's up to you what you want to do with that clean slate. In high school, you have to earn a minimal amount of credits to meet graduation requirements and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. You're gonna build a high school transcript, which means all of your coursework, your grades, and your credits will all be listed on one document. You'll have all of your final course grades for the next four years will be added together and averaged, and it's going to form your cumulative grade point average or your GPA. You're going to begin considering your future career options by taking elective courses. High school is a time for you to be selfish. It's for you to figure out your likes and your dislikes, and even maybe what you would consider doing as a career after your high school journey. You're also going to work towards earning your diploma and your graduation status by passing courses, passing state required testing, and earning all of the credits needed. One of our most popular questions that we've received is what is the new traditional schedule going to look like? Well, folks, here it is. As you can see, this is the schedule on Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. It is made up of eight periods, approximately 45 minutes each. There is some extra time built in the period one, as well as period eight, in order to get morning and afternoon and any other pertinent information to you during announcements. There's also two lunch periods and a place for eight different courses. On Wednesday, the bell schedule shifts just slightly in order to accommodate an enrichment period. Enrichment is a time in which there is no coursework being done. Instead, you can go to class meetings or clubs, get help from a teacher, or maybe even take a test if you've missed a day of school. Period six has also had a few minutes added to it in order to accommodate any daily announcements. The Evergreen High School Curriculum Guide. 
This is a great resource of information and is going to be referred to throughout this presentation. The curriculum guide is divided into two parts. The first part talks about all of the high school educational programs, our grading scale, information about class rank and GPA, graduation requirements, different types of diplomas, different coursework. The second half of the curriculum guide is made up of every single course that Evergreen High School offers. Information about each course is also listed, which will tell you which grades are allowed to take that course, and it lists any prerequisites. A prerequisite is the course that you have to have first in order to take the next sequence of courses. It also explains how many credits the course is worth, whether or not it's an elective or a graduation requirement, as well as information on the course itself. Evergreen High School is made up of three different types of educational programs for students. The first program is our college preparatory program. These courses are intended for students who plan to attend a four-year college or university or a two-year community college option upon graduation from high school. We also offer a vocational program, and this is designed to prepare students for the various programs that are offered at the Four County Career Center in Archibald, Ohio. We also have a general program, which is intended for any student planning to go directly into the workforce, an apprenticeship, or a technical school upon graduation from high school. Graduate, graduation requirements for the class of 2025. These requirements are stated by the state of Ohio, and it says that in order to graduate, every student must complete the following credits in the following courses. We have them broke down, which shows in the next four years, you will take four credits of English, you'll take English and Language Arts 9, 10, 11, and 12, unless you're taking the honors courses. In social studies, you have to have three credits, which must include world history, American history, and American government. Over the next four years, you have to have four credits of math. Those courses must be Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and an additional math course of your choosing. In science, you have to have three courses, which must include physical science, biology, and one additional science course that you get to choose. Health and physical education. You have to take a health class, a PE class, and PE2 in order to make up your full credit that is required by the state of Ohio for graduation. You also have to have six electives and those must include at least one credit in either the fine arts or world language. And fine arts include band, choir, speech, or any art course. Students must accumulate a minimum of 21 credits in order to graduate from Evergreen High School. The class of 2025 has additional graduation requirements beyond credits. Students must be able to show competency. Competency means they have to earn a passing score, which is a 684 or higher on Ohio's Algebra 1 and English 2 tests. If students are unable to earn those passing scores, there are additional options and those options can be found on page 17 in the curriculum guide for more information. Another graduation requirement is students must be able to show readiness. In order to show readiness, students have to earn two diploma seals in order to demonstrate academic, technical, and professional skills needed for post high school endeavors. 
These seals are all listed on page 17 in the curriculum guide for more information. And there will be lots of information coming as we get closer. We've broken down the required courses for ninth grade students. As you're filling out your schedule, you will see, as a ninth grader, you have two options for your English and language arts credit. The standard sequence of English is to take language arts nine. And for those students who are at the higher end of the academic scale, you may be interested in taking our Honors Language Arts 9, and both of those courses and their descriptions are listed in the curriculum guide. Freshman Math. Ninth graders have the option of taking Algebra 1 as the standard sequence. Students who take Algebra 1 would have taken 8th grade math with pre-algebra from Mr. Steele last year. Those students who took Algebra 1 as 8th graders are part of our honors sequence and therefore you'll be taking geometry for your freshman math class. Those students in the intervention sequence will be taking Algebra 1 concepts along with the math lab in order to meet that requirement. Freshman Science. There is only one Freshman Science course and every student has to take it and that is Physical Science. Social Studies also only offers one course for freshman students. All freshmen will take Modern World History next year. Questions that we get regarding our music and performing arts information, since we are going to a traditional schedule, our band is broke up a little bit differently next year. And Mr. Lyons prefers that students take band all year. In order to take band all year, you will have to request marching band, Marching band is only offered for first semester and it will go over two periods throughout the day. Second semester, students will need to sign up for concert band. This will allow students to have band for the entire school year. If students would like to have band twice for two periods second semester, they can take jazz band. Jazz band can only be taken if the student is also enrolled in concert band for second semester. This is the way that we can give students a double period of band second semester. For those students interested in continuing to take choir, choral is the option that you will wanna take and choral is a full year class in which you will earn one credit. Some information on our Four County Career Center. Four County is an extension of Evergreen High School and it offers a variety of vocational programs. It is located in Archibald, Ohio. Students attend their junior and senior years provided that they've earned the required number of credits in order to gain admission. Students who attend Four County Career Center earn both an Evergreen High School diploma and a four county vocational certificate of completion. Students who attend four county remain Evergreen High School students. Students will receive more information about four county career center as sophomores and the application process will begin in December of a student's 10th grade year. Many of you have probably heard the term CCP or our College Credit Plus program. Students earn college and high school graduation credit by successfully completing college courses in this program. The CCP courses will appear on both the high school and the college schedule 
as well as on their transcripts. Students taking CCP courses usually take their classes through the University of Toledo, Northwest State Community College, or Owens Community College. Transportation is not included if the students attend in-person classes. There's an annual information meeting held each year at Evergreen High School for interested participants as well as their parents and their guardians. This year's CCP meeting is February 9th at 6 o'clock in the high school cafeteria for students participating in next year's program. You are also invited to attend if you'd just like to learn more about the program or you can put off attending that meeting until you are certain you will be participating. Some information regarding requesting your courses and the scheduling process for next year. We ask that you please review the high school curriculum guide and discuss courses with the parents. Please be sure the student name and information is filled out on the request sheet. We want you to select 10 courses that best meet your needs. This includes eight of your first choice and the require, required courses, along with two alternative electives in case the electives become filled or they're not offered due to low numbers. It gives us a way to start manipulating your schedule requests. We'll want you to complete the registration form. A parent signature is required. Freshmen will meet with the high school counselor to put the course requests into Power Scheduler located in Power School. Please remember the paper copy of the registration form that you fill out will be considered the official document. And of course, you're able to meet with either counselor in the high school or middle school to discuss your course selections or answer any questions if you have them. The very first step in filling out this form is probably one of the most important, and it is filling out your name, a good phone number that we can get a hold of you, and an email address that you check regularly. There's nothing worse than trying then when we get a form in and it is blank or we get a form and we have a question and we need to try and get a hold of you and we can't read the information that you've given us. So please, 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 I beg you, please fill out this information so we can read it and fill it out legibly and we will all be happy. Secondly, on this form you will see the very first block of classes are all of the required classes that you have to take your freshman year. These classes are also known as core classes. You will see the classes that you have no options have already had an X placed in the box for you. As you will see, science, you have to take physical science. That X is filled out. For social studies, the only option you have is modern world history. And physical education and health, every student has to take PE and health. It's a state requirement, and that is already filled out for you. You will see these three classes combined make up one full credit. That means English language arts, students have the option of choosing either the regular language arts nine or the honors language arts nine. If you choose to do honors, you will need to get your current ELA teacher to initial that says they believe you will be successful in this course and this course is for you. Math, if you had algebra last year as an eighth grader with Mr. Steele, that was pre-algebra. 
That means the course you will start with is, pre, is Algebra 1 in the high school. If you took Algebra 1 as an 8th grader, that means you will now take Geometry as your 9th grade math class. Algebra 1 is listed in parentheses because you had to have completed this course and passed in order to take Geometry. These courses are listed alphabetically, but Algebra 1 Concepts and Math Lab go together. Those students who need intervention services, you will take Algebra 1 Concepts along with the Math Lab. So as you can see, if I mark the Standard Language Arts class in Algebra 1, I have already listed one, two, three, four, five courses for my ninth grade schedule already. The second block of classes begin your electives. This means you get to choose if you would like to take these courses or not. Here on the far right corner is your music and performing arts courses that we talked about in the slideshow presentation. For choir students, you will mark choir or chorale, and that is for the full year. If you want to take band for the entire school year, then you will need to list marching band because marching band is only for the first half of the year and symphonic band and concert, I'm sorry, symphonic and concert band are listed as one. Most freshmen and sophomores are in concert band. Symphonic is usually reserved for those students in the upper level classes. So you will more than likely be in the concert band sequence. You will mark both marching band and concert band in order to get band for your full year. Each one of these is worth a half credit, so together they are worth one credit. You have your choice if you want to take any classes in the Family and Consumer Science Department, the Computer and Technology Department, or the Business Department. All of the courses listed here on this sheet are open to ninth graders. The bottom boxes offer more electives. Under miscellaneous, this is where you will mark if you would like a study hall and which if you have a semester preference. If you're a football player and you know you're not going to get home from practice until late and you really are going to need some extra time getting that homework and assignments completed, you know football is in the fall, well then you're gonna want your study hall first semester for the first half of the school year. Maybe you're in track or cross country or the high school musical, which happens in the spring. Well, then maybe you want your study hall second semester. This is where you would put those options so that you can coordinate your life schedule with your school schedule. If you receive special education services, the career and life skills class is a requirement and you will need your teacher to initial. Visual and media arts are all of our art courses. These are all open to ninth graders. Art one is the first course in the sequence. Once you take art one, a whole set of openings will be available to you in different courses that you can take in your future years. Vocational Agriculture. This is Ag 1 and FFA. If you're interested in that course, you'll put your X on the Ag line. World Languages are also known as Foreign Language. And as incoming freshmen, these are what is open to you. We have a brand new French 1 class starting next year. You can take Spanish 1. As an 8th grader, some of you had the option to take Spanish 1. If you've already completed that course and you want to continue in the Spanish studies, then you will mark an X for Spanish 2 in order to take that class next year. Again, the prerequisite is in parentheses so you know you had to complete this course before you can take this course. 
Very important is that you turn the form over. On the back, this is the form that's saying yes. These are the courses I want to take. I am okay with it. And my parents are okay with it. Student, please sign. Go ahead and put your date in there. And parent, please sign and give us your name and date. This lets us know that the student talked with their parent and that you're okay with the courses that you've chosen. We also suggest that you take a picture of this form for your own reference so you remember what courses you signed up for because you're going to be turning this form in to the high school guidance office in order to complete the scheduling process. Remember, you're going to want to pick a total of 10 courses. That way you have two alternatives in case something happens and some of these courses are not offered or they're full or we need to know how to fill your schedule. If by chance you are, you are going to take a CCP course, please also fill out 10 full classes. It's easier to drop classes than it is to try and fill your schedule once all of the students are scheduled. We hope that helps. We hope you understand. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Good luck, Vikings. The next important date for our incoming freshmen is the upcoming freshman meeting. It will be held February 11th during the school day. This is when students will meet with Mrs. Lumbreiser, the high school counselor, and she's going to walk you through step-by-step step how to get your courses marked in Power Schedule listed in Power School. This is the last step of the scheduling process. And finally, if you have any questions, concerns, or would like more information, please don't hesitate to contact Mr. Curtis, our high school principal, or Mrs. Lumbreiser, our high school counselor. Once again, welcome to the class of 2025. Go Vikings!